Right, and there we go. We have one very nice job, okay? So primer coat's all on, really happy of how it all is up to you everywhere. So now we're gonna put on a wet coat. So what I've done is I've made this one up, we've added more thinner to it. So this is almost literally like just like wet thinners. Uh, you know, it's almost just like clean out almost. So this, the whole point of putting this coat on is that it's a nice, very thin, very wet coat. So when we spray this on, it looks wet. And again, you're being a bit bad here. We should have some extraction running, but just for a second, you can see how much clouding and nusk comes off. <coughs> so, we just hit these a sec. Pull back, there we go, that's better. Okay, so the point of putting on a really wet coat just like that is that if you have got any tiny, tiny textures actually on the paintwork, it will melt them, okay? So this is basically, because it's almost like neat thinners going onto it, it basically just melts them straight into the surface and then when it dries, hopefully already, there you go, it is a gorgeous satin smooth finish. There's no texture to that at all. And that's our base coat for what we want to move on with. And again, technically in some areas, this is going to have three, maybe four separate coats of paint on top. So again, a good foundation getting this down should give you one, your paint will adhere to it better because it's got a nice grip. It's got a good surface. So that surface should carry through. So again, like we're saying, if you had a real rough surface down here now, the subsequent quotes are just going to get worse and worse and worse. So now we've got a good one down in here. So that would be good. So if we did need to perhaps sand back a coat or something else like that, because there's no texture to it, it will sand back very smooth. Yet if you had a lot of lumps and bumps in this, obviously those high points would sand back. And if you got like green on here and had gray underneath, obviously the gray would show through in those high areas because it's all smooth, it should be absolutely fine. And that top one, there we go, it's dry already. So that way we can handle this. And then hopefully you catch it in the light, it's just sort of bordering on glossy almost but it's a gorgeous smooth finish and again good foundation you get this down and done right and looks good then moving forward every other coat should be not a problem at all so we've got to do just the same on the other side just going to get a nice little wet coat down under here then we're going to give it probably a good sort of six hours totally dry off that way we know it's done it's dusted we can come back we can make sure we don't have any problems with it if we don't then then going forward it'll be a case of right let's get that white coat and underneath mask up these intakes and all the rest of it and then we can get the camo on. Okay, so, right, the primer coat is on and I have to say, make sure I've got any paint on my hand, it is absolutely flawless. And I do, don't like to blow my own trumpet, but it is absolutely gorgeous. It feels better than the plastic felt in the first place. It's extremely smooth, very, very nice, both sides as you can see. And I've got no worries or issues at all with anything on here. So we're very, very happy of how that's gone on there. All right, so what this means though, we can start to get the lighter coat underneath. As I said, we are gonna do all of this as post-shading, so we don't need to do pre-shading. Now, pre-shading is just this thing where we actually go around and put some shadowing in beforehand. We're gonna do it afterwards, which is, you know, a couple of different techniques, ways to do it, obviously with an airbrush, with oils, so forth and so on. So we'll cover that when we get to it. For the moment though, when we were priming up, we popped a little bit still down inside the actual intakes and things like that. So obviously we need to put the uh, gloss coats back in again with the white, all right? So what we've got down in here is some white and that airbrush is very high from when we were doing it last time. So that's not that right back. That's more like it, okay. And what we're going to do, we're just going to pop around and we're going to put some white into some areas where we've probably put a little bit of something else. So we're going to put a little bit just down into the wheel wells. So we can do down in there. And we're just going to go into the main gear legs and to the other side. Just to pop those back in there again. So that's those in. And then what we're going to do is do these intakes as well so the intakes don't have to go down into it it's just the the front part of these so we're just going to do those so when we do come to put the actual proper paint in there for the overlays uh, for the camo going down in there and so forth and so on then obviously it's got that firm area back in there and so we just 
whip a little bit of that around again. So that's those intakes taken care of and looking very much the part as you can see down in there like that. Okay, so obviously as a lot have been said obviously about the colour, technically it's an off-white. Uh, so from that point of view they call it basically an insignia white or something else like that. The trouble that I found though with Hitaka's insignia white, it's probably the most magnolia of them all. They've all got like a slight hue to them which in some ways is good because you don't want a pure white under here because it will just look wrong. So what we've got to do is obviously put in something in between both. So what I've got is a little mixing pot here courtesy of Nathan who's given me a couple of these little Pyrex little dishes. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come along with this in this one and we're just going to put in a good dollop of all the mix in there. So we've got around about, I would say around about four mil in there. But what we are going to do is going to come along with the pure white. So they call this traffic white. Uh, for the actual colour. So this is C101. The other one we were using for the insignia white is 049. This is a bright white. So in some ways you're sort of reverting back. So what we're going to do is going to come in with probably a good mill of that in there. Again, so all we're doing is basically a 4 to 1 ratio down in this and then we're going to mix the two together which then hopefully will give us what we're after. So we just mix up down in there and I can look at it on the brush and that actually doesn't look too far off of what we want. Now the big thing to remember is that this is not necessarily the colour we're going to end up with on here. The problem that obviously we're going to have on here is going to have lots and lots of weathering of different stages so forth and so on right the way through so it's going to go darker and it's going to wear in but that's exactly what we want. We don't want this to be a factory fresh or a showbird so obviously it is going to have your normal wear and tear and the great thing about all of this recess details it's going to have washes which then are going to obviously transfer to giving us the grime effects into this one exactly what we want all right so what we can do is we can just how much we got in here to be honest we got quite a bit in here but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of this in I'll tell you what I'll grab another pot I have a cunning plan for in a minute you see so we're just going to take that out we're not even going to clean out the color cup because this is going to go one to the other so we're just going to put some down in there and we're going to come in with our standard sort of 50-50 mix. Seal with a self-leveling thinner down in there like that. And we're going to mix this together. And again, don't mix it in the colour cup. Mix it in a separate pot. All right, so usual thing, consistency of wetter than milk. All right, so if you have got a, a trigger you know lock on the back so you dial this all the way in and your trigger hardly pulls and then obviously the more you have it open what you want to do is set this because obviously it's a very thin coat we're putting down so we're going to screw this all the way in so we've got it closed and we're going to pull out until we've just got a small amount of paint coming through so we've got a small amount down in here quite a high air pressure so we're just going to knock that back a little bit that's it so what we've done is we've limited the amount of paint, we've limited the amount of the air. So if we just push down and pull back all the way, that's all that's going to happen. We are literally just going to get this coming out of it. So nothing too fancy, which gives you total control over what we're about to do. All right. So literally all we're going to do now is put down two coats. All right. We're not going to need to go any further. We don't want it to be perfect either. We want it to be quite patchy and motley because what we're going to do is we're going to come back in a minute and we're going to add a little bit of white into this and fade in to do the centers of the panels a little bit lighter. Okay. And so forth and so on with it. So what I'm going to do is just mask up as always, health and safety first. Okay, we're going to hit the extractors. And we're going to start.
So what we're doing here is literally mottling it in. So instead of doing nice broad areas, lots of paint, we're limiting the paint and we're just doing each panel. It doesn't matter if it overlaps or anything else like that, but what you're just trying to do is give it sort of texture into the paintwork. So again, I wouldn't worry too much. Bigger ones, you can take your time and a nice gentle panel. And then obviously there's a panel, there's a panel, there's a panel. And we're just working each one in turn. So the whole point is, straight off the bat, we are starting to mottle and break up the paint. The trouble you've got is, when this is such a large area, as you can probably see it in here, it's going to be really easy to end up with a white brick. And that's definitely not what we want. So again, just taking your time. We've got to cover it all, but we don't want to cover it very nice. Okay, so that's the type of effect we're sort of going with, okay? So once you've got that base coat of it down on there, we're going to mask up. We're going to increase the air pressure. We're going to increase the air pressure just a little bit. And we're going to increase the flow. Alright, and we're just going to put a wet coat quite quickly and thinly right the way over it all. So that now ties it all together. So that's a good enough for it to have a coat over it. I'm actually really happy how that's turned out actually. Again, we're gonna come in in a moment and do post shading to it, but you have now got all the basics down on there. So what we'll do is we'll do the other wing, as you can see the, the difference between them down in there. I know the camera hates with, with white, but again, it's got the nice basics for it in there. And again, it's to do with texture and how light it's reacting with the paint to break it up. So that's really nice, and as you can see, we're dry already, that's the beauty about rapid thinners. So what we're going to do, do the same on the other wing and obviously up here on the front and then we're going to come back, lighten it up slightly, do a little bit of post shading.
Okay, so hopefully you can see on one of the cameras we're looking pretty much exactly what we want. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just to show it a little bit better, I'm going to bring it over to the other main camera and we'll have a proper look. There you go, it's a bit better over here because the camera's in there, an absolute nightmare, especially when you're dealing with white. Anyway, there we go. Hopefully you can see. It's got a little bit of texture, it's got a little bit of blotchiness, but the main thing is from a distance over there, it's got that nice look to it. And the big thing is, again, this isn't white because if you get a sheet of white paper, you can see the difference between it. You know, this is definitely an off-white. You don't want to use a white with it. It's got to be a sort of off-white, but this is now going to give us the ability to work with it. Because now it's an off-white, we can come in here with white, lighter whites and things like that to basically break up a little bit. So what we're going to use in a moment is come back, going to add a little bit of white to our mix, just going to pick out centers of panels and around panel lines and that. What will happen is, is that these will darken down when we come in with further washes, like the clay wash will just neutralize everything on the spot. But then afterwards, if we wanted to come back and going to come in with some streaking as we're going to do this one and break it up, it gives us that ability to play with it. Because we've lightened it a little bit, it allows us it to darken it without it going too dark and having to try and bring it back. So this is the whole point to it. You've gone in with technically a darker white, if you like, or a very light magnolia, as I call it, but it's broken up already. We can then break it up further and then go back the other way. So it's almost the case of saying, well, you're starting off with white, so we're gonna darken the white so we can then relighten the white and then darken it all with washes afterwards, if that makes sense. But the thing is, if you've gone in there with white, there's no coming back from it because you'd have to then make it darker. So then if you put a darkened one onto it, so say you post shaded it all with darkened colors, then you're gonna come in again with then darkened washes to darken it up and so forth. And then obviously with weathering's gonna darken it. So you're going darker all the way. This way we've gone slightly dark, we can lighten, and then we can go dark again. And it just allows us to break it up. And the thing is, when you're dealing with something that is so big as this is, you know, it's all too easy to have that brick syndrome where it's just one color and then that's it. So the only thing you can do really to break it up with is put a wash over it and that's about as far as you can go. At least this way we can actually make the paintwork work with us to break it all up. And again, one of the secrets to scale modeling is, is to give the scale effect is to make the eye move around. So to make the eye move around is, it's looking for different colors, different textures, panel lines, things like that. It's purely so your eye is going everywhere and all of a sudden the object seems to be a lot bigger than it really is. And that's because you've broken it up. If it's just white, you look at it, you just see white and that's it. And again, that's when things look like toys and things like that. So to give them a scale effect, we're just breaking it up and just making your eye work, make it look around, looking at the different textures, looking at the different shades that are underneath there as well, as well as obviously weathering like, you know, panel line washes and oils and things like that in there. But it's just that way of giving depth to your paintwork. The more depth you have, the more realistic it'll look. So anyway, really happy of how that is again. Love gloss lacquers and I love using them with obviously rapid drying thinners. It's absolutely, it's a perfect, you know, sort of key. Okay, so what we're gonna do, get back in there, we're gonna make up a little bit of a, a bleachy mix, if you like, to try and just to fade out some of these panels. And again, we're not doing every single one, otherwise it's gonna look like a grid. We're just gonna pick around some in here to tell a story, again. So it's one of these things, this is where the artistic side of you comes out, and it's how you personalize your model. If you wanted to, obviously knock yourself out, try and find a color reference photo from underside of a Vulcan. It's not that easy. But again, you can use your imagination, let it run riot, and have fun. Right, okay, so as you can see, we've got about that down in there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tip that back in here because we're not gonna actually need tons of this. This is the point, you know, we're only gonna need a small amount for this. All right, so we've got it down in here. So then all we're gonna do is, I think you've missed the best way of doing this. I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna tip it into the white, to be honest. So we've got a little bit of the original color left over. So we're just gonna come in and probably gonna do about 50-50 down in there. So we've got a nice off white. I'm looking at it, it still looks a little bit strong. So we're just going a little bit more. That's better. Okay. So now we've got an off white of the original, you know, but it's still in the ballpark of. We'll keep that safely out of the way so we don't knock it flying. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here with probably around about 75% thinners to paint. So the whole point is now is that this will not cover anything. It's just gonna, gonna go slightly bleed into. 
Now, the one thing you do have to worry about somewhat is if you've got neat thinners here, if you put down too much, too thick, too quick, it's going to eat the original coat. You can probably see how thin that is on the brush because literally you can just see the bristles. So everything comes through. So it's very, very thin. And you'll find this when you shoot the paint, it comes out, it's just wet. So what we need to do is obviously turn down the amount of paint that's coming out the back. So we're going to lock the trigger all the way forward and we're just going to pull it until we've got paint coming through. Just a small amount. So it's obviously coming through literally just like this. So there's hardly anything at all. But we want to retain the air pressure quite high because we don't want to make it like a hard edge. We want it to be a nice soft edge. All right, so that's actually how we're going to work this. So let's grab our wing system okay so what we're going to do is we're picking out certain areas so centers of panels always a good one nice soft edges in here got a panel running in there we've got panel at the top here we got panel here over not doing every panel big panels they sort of get squiggly marks in we've got these down the sides here we've got a panel here one running across, every other one, not every, so we've sort of done every other one down in here. Big panel, center of, again, one below it, this side gets it, the one below, we're going to avoid that one, that one had it there, so we just put it this one, all of that one can have it, bit there, bit in there, other panel, bottom area gets it. So we're sort of breaking it up. I know the camera is probably hating trying to focus in on this, you know. So once you've got that on there, obviously it would still look too strong. So we're going to do the rest of it. Then we're going to come back and put what I call a filter coat. So this is just going to be a very thin wet coat right the way over the lot to sort of half blend it in. So we've got the differences coming back in here. So again, look, there is it back here. Can you get it? And don't forget, if you've got any areas you've sort of missed, or you know any areas that look still a little bit dark and things like that then by all means use this paint to help cover that all in So hopefully you can see from a distance what we're trying to achieve and I'm actually really happy with that that's come along really really nice one thing to remember is also don't forget to do your doors and all your bits and pieces as you can see this is really strong sort of magnolia color so we're going to take this opportunity to knock these back now to make them a little bit more like the rest of it by having this thin stuff right the way over the top to help blend this in and then what we can do is add a little bit of white to this 
and just redo everything probably on the sprues. It'll be easy to touch all this in afterwards once it is all together. But obviously this stuff is way too magnolia-y with the traffic colour. We need to have it a lot lighter. So we can do it literally just like this. Okay, and a couple of coats of this, build it up. It will give us exactly what we're after. Otherwise it will look well out of place, all right? But no, very, very happy with that. So now what we can do is, we've still got quite a bit in here. I'm probably gonna keep a little bit of this back purely because we might need it for other things. Again, probably too much back. Let's grab a little bit more. There we go, that's about what we want. We only want to make one quick dash over the top of this. So we're gonna re-thin this again. A little bit more thinners. So it's probably, you know, this is like milk. Well, it's not even milk, this is just thinners with a hint of, but this is just to add a nice little filter right the way over everything. So again, because it's a filter, what we want to do is up the amount of paint coming through. We want to up the air pressure. So we're just going to up the air pressure, allow a bit more paint to come through, and then we'll need extractors for this. So both of these on. And we're just going to put on a coat just to blend everything together. our underside coat so what we do we'll pop this over clean out the airbrush and we'll have a look see what we got under the big camera right there we go out on throw bay and hopefully you can see now we've got something that's looking pretty darn good as to say it's a little bit patchy it's a little bit motley uh, and most of all though it's a nice off-white color which is what we want for our base again it's got a little bit of texture to it now which is not a bad thing because obviously we don't want it to be glossy and totally smooth because we need the weathering to bite to get something to grip to so that last coat was quite high air pressure just a dusty one over the downside to it is obviously you get more of a satin finish you can probably hear it compared to the the top but again it's not what I would call rough texture. It's just basically given a satin finish. So when we do come along with washes and that, it's gonna get caught in that texture. We can sand it off. We can do loads of different things with it to make it work. But so we've got a lot more painting and various bits and pieces to do under here, but that's the basics of it sorted out and done now. So what we can do is concentrate on masking it all up. So we're gonna to have to mask up these intakes properly this time making sure that obviously so when we unmask it we've got a nice demarcation between the white and obviously the camo and then obviously we're going to have to mask up slightly underneath here as well the camo wraps slightly around on the lip slightly under on the side down in here and all the other areas on this one as well so we want to protect this white coat right the way through now so the final sort of unmask everything and then we can go with the final weathering after it but anyway we've been around we've also done a few things down behind us things like the actual uh, doors for the actual speed brakes, things like that. The undercarriage doors, they've been painted in the same color as this. So that way there's no surprises because we haven't got to try and make that color again because we've got it all taken care of it right the way through. But there we go, phase one completed. That's the underside done. 